Hello friends, this is Chuck Reagan here. Uh, I'm here with a lot of friends in uh, Cologne at Etsy Fabrique. And uh, we're uh, playing a gig. I'm honored to be here in this beautiful city. Once again, uh, playing, a, playing a gig tonight. Um, I've got a bunch of great friends with me who, who are taking the stage with me this evening. Uh, Todd Bean, Dave Hidalgo, John Gaunt, Joe Ginsburg, and uh, we're just honored to be here. But um, I was asked to be a part of this interview where they asked me to choose some of my favorite records or one record in particular um, that either affected me as a young man or changed my life or just one of those, you know, one of the classic records that uh, never gets old to us. You know, I know that um, a lot of us as, as music lovers, we always kind of have those old standbys that, you know, we can put on time and time and time again. You can listen to these, these type of records no matter what mood you're in. If you're down, the record helps. If you're having a great time, the record helps. If you're cooking food, your food tastes better when you're playing this record, <laughs> you know? Those kind of records. And, um, you know, for me, uh, growing up, um, Credence Clearwater Revival was always one of those bands that kind of, uh, it, was, it was like a slow growth kind of thing. I mean, like I loved them when I heard them first off, and I'll get to that, I'll explain kind of how I first heard them. You know, but they were always one of those bands that uh, just slowly grew on me over and over and over again. And even, you know, as a young man growing up, uh, growing up it through, you know, in kind of a old conservative Southern Baptist Christian household as a young kid to, you know, finding skateboarding and finding punk rock music to, you know, finding rock and roll and classic rock to going back to punk and then back to rock and roll and then to this and that and like just kind of all over the map of music and then learning to play music and uh, and then slowly just kind of finding these artists that I loved and I respected and digging deeper into their catalogs. CCR was always one of the bands that just kind of stood the test of time in my catalog and on my record shelf and was just one of those bands that was always relevant. They were always relevant. Like their songs, their, the mood, the rhythms, you know, it was just always one of those bands who there was, there was no gimmicks, there was no like dressing up to fit some kind of style or some kind of genre. They, it just seemed like it was just bare bones music, amped up, feel good tunes, you know, thoughtful lyrics, strong melodies, strong songwriting, and uh, and just beautiful work that, you know, where they just created kind of timeless pieces of music. <clears throat> Anyhow, uh, I was chose to, <coughs> excuse me, choose a record and uh, Bayou Country was, was one of the, one of the records that, that I chose. Um, uh, my, my buddy Mirko, I think he had a hard time finding Bayou Country, but he found this collection, which is Chronicle, the first one, and uh, it's basically like a greatest hits, greatest hits record for CCR. And uh, this is a great, great collection. It's a kind of a crucial classic collection. If you don't own this record, you're doing yourself a disservice. If you like any of this kind of music, but um, it's a it's a great setup. It's a gatefold. It's pretty awesome. Uh, they'll they explain some of the stories where these guys you know kind of come from. And you know, one thing that was uh, really incredible to me about uh, CCR is they weren't even together for that long. Like they were basically, uh, they were formed in uh, 1967. A lot of these guys, you know, uh, John Fogarty, Tom Fogarty, Stu Cook, Doug Clifford, all these guys uh, had been playing together 
since the late 50s and um, you know on and off and they actually didn't form CCR till 1967 late 1967 didn't really put out they didn't put out their first record until 68 what's wild is throughout their you know their runnings um, they just had so many hits an insane amount of hits uh, I think it says somewhere in here that they uh, their songs charted like 15 times 15 different songs charted which is just insane in itself but what's really wild is they disbanded in July of 1972 so they basically put out um, I think either five or six albums between their first album in 68 I think five or six albums between 1968 and 1972 and every time they would release a record in between each release it almost seemed like every other month they would release another single and all of their singers singles either went gold or went platinum it was just crazy they were just kind of like a kind of like a hit machine I guess you know but you know from an industry standard they were just one of those you know special uh, you know special mixes of people who just wrote wrote and recorded some badass tunes but uh, for me um, you know this what where this band became relevant and super cool to me is uh, I um, you know I I grew up I grew up kind of in an old Southern Baptist household and uh, you know I hadn't heard much of CCR other than probably the radio on the school bus or you know over at a friend's house on the radio or something kind of growing up and uh, you know I grew up in a family where you know we listened to there was a lot of bluegrass music there was a lot of spirit driven gospel music um, on my mother's side of the family, uh, we're all Cajun, Cajun folks. So there was a lot of, you know, Creole music, Cajun tunes. Um, some of my earliest memories of of hearing live music was hearing my my mama and my papa play in front of me. That those are my grandparents on my on my mother's side, and uh, my papa uh, was an accordion player. And my mama would just bang on the tambourine, and they both sang, you know, would just sing French songs. So, you know, we would just listen to a lot of, you know, they sitting sitting on the floor with my brother, playing on the floor, playing with the dogs, listening to mama and papa play. Some of my earliest, you know, uh, memories. So there was that that kind of music, and then obviously kind of growing up in the southeastern region of the United States, there was always, um, you know, country music, of course. That was just kind of everywhere. Then. And, uh, you know, so I had all of that that I grew up in. And that was all of those, all of those combinations of music is something that somewhere along the line, uh, CCR, Picked up, you know. They have little bits and pieces of all of that. They're not any. They don't fall into any one of those genres. They're, they've always, all well, they were always their own thing. Um, but uh, uh, then from there, I found skateboarding, and my life changed completely. I found, you know, bands like Bad Brains and you know Minor Threat and and germs and you know uh, foreskins and the first time I ever heard Metallica or you know old Red Hot Chili Peppers you know and you know before they were before they were the Red Hot Chili Peppers that everybody knows you know like all this kind of crazy underground edgy aggressive music that was great to listen to while you were skateboarding and hurting yourself you know, it's just, and it changed my life. And 
what where this band came into play is I had a, a really good friend who um, his mom and dad did what was like a dream come true to every kid in the neighborhood. His mom and dad opened up a skate shop and it was like, wow, everything changed because all of a sudden here was our, our good buddy and it was the, the Richard family, Lafayette, Louisiana. And uh, here was our good buddy whose parents now owned a skateboard shop. They had demos and they would bring pro skaters to the shop and skate in the parking lot. And uh, they used to build a lot of skateboard ramps, you know, out in front of their house. And um, they were always so supportive of whatever we wanted to do. And the mom would come out, she would cook, cook food on the grill for us. And, you know, on weekends we'd be there and, and we'd be skating out on the sidewalk in the driveway. And his father used to build all of the skateboard ramps for all of us kids. So yeah, um, you know, the, the Richard family um, were extremely supportive and they would let us, let all of us kids play whatever music we wanted to play. So it was kind of this atmosphere where I was learning how to skateboard, I had all these new friends and like, and I was hearing bands for the first time like the Dead Kennedys and Bad Brains and Minor Threat and Metallica and Megadeth and, you know, ACDC and, I don't know, you know, Public Enemy and Beastie Boys and all this, just a really strange fabric, a quilt of all these different genres and, you know, but for the most part, it was all edgy and aggressive. Um, Mr. Richard, the man who built all of our skateboard ramps, though they were very positive and respectful in letting us play whatever music, every once in a while he would say, all right boys, I'm playing my music now. And he would pop the tape out and he would put in CCR. And we would, nothing would change for us. We're still skateboarding. And we were still wrecking ourselves and we, you know, we had launch ramps and bump ramps and rail slides and all these, these things that he built and some of them we tried to build and like, you know, we were just, just being kids, skateboarding, ripping it up, learning about music and learning this and that. And my point is, is all through this time, I was listening to all these bands you know, these punk bands that were just blowing my mind. You know, this new aggressive music that was scaring me and exciting me all at the same time. And, and then here comes, you know, like this band. And he puts, you know, and I mean, not only CCR, he used to put on Bob Dylan and Woody Guthrie and all kinds of cool old stuff. And he put on uh, CCR and what happened was all of a sudden, all this music that I was listening to, all this kind of, you know, skateboarding, skate rock and punk rock and this and that, became completely seamless with this band. CCR, even though it was a completely different genre, completely different energy, it's, it's still like, we were listening to it at a time in our lives where it was we were completely, <clears throat> extremely impressionable. We were young, our ears were open, our eyes were open, and I grew to love this band um, so much. And growing up, no matter what kind of phases that, uh, that I went through in my life, this was a band that has kind of always stood the test of time and wasn't a band that, I mean, I'm still holding the record, you know, so, and I don't know, I think the, the you know, the first time, you know, I, I listened to CCR for myself was, well, I mean, I guess I had to be, you know, uh, 12 years old, so, 
I don't know, maybe 27 years ago. So they stood the test of time for me. <laughs> but yeah, um, by far one of my favorite bands. And uh, this is an incredible collection. It's a must have. It's a great record. Um, you know, definitely get the vinyl over you get over the, the CD. It's just a big difference.